Izzy and this is Dizzy Quilts and Sews. I have a quilting video for you today. I thought I would share how I plan and execute on a quilting plan uh, for a very large bed size quilt. So I'll share with you how I get set up, how I prep and how I basically break up such a big quilt into manageable chunks or pieces that I can quilt on my domestic sewing machine. So let's get started. All right, so I'm at my sewing machine. I've got an extension table here that's gonna help make the surface bigger for my hands to get on the quilt. I have a bunch of bobbins already filled. I put my free motion quilting foot on the machine. I've changed my needle, I've oiled the machine, and I'm ready to go. And uh, now I'm gonna do free motion quilting on this quilt just because um, it's a bit too large for me to do walking foot quilting, um, just turning that quilt over and over again to quilt some straight lines or wavy lines with the walking foot is a little, it's a little impossible to be honest. So I prefer free motion quilting on big quilts like this. To do free motion quilting, I've lowered my feed dogs. I'm able to do that with my machine and I have my stitch length over here at zero which basically means the quilt, the quilt will only move if I move it with my hands. I have some quilting gloves. Um, I got those, I think, on Amazon, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, these gloves have grippy things, um, which basically help with holding the quilt or moving the quilt. <clears throat> now... These are not a must-have, obviously. I mean, they're not expensive, um, but they really help. To be honest, they're going to save your hands and your shoulders, especially maneuvering a big, big quilt like this. It just helps when you don't have to put as much pressure on the quilt to move it under your needle. So that's why I love to wear them. All right, so I've brought my quilt over to the machine. Now I have a lot of room on that side and that's where most of the quilt is gonna basically stay while I quilt. And I have a little bit of room behind my machine. Uh, there's a wall there, so um, not a whole lot of room, but it's usually enough. Now, when I first started quilting, I watched a lot of videos on free motion quilting, especially big quilts, and they said, you know, you, you should start in the middle and then roll up the sides and then you'd have to maneuver these huge kind of rolls here under the machine. It, it really didn't work for me. I prefer, very scientific word here, I prefer swishing my quilt um, rather than rolling it. It's just easier for me, I find. And I also don't start in the middle. Um, I want to have as little quilt as possible on the right side of the needle. So um, I try to break up the quilt into sections and keep that section under the needle basically and then turn the quilt so that another section is right under the needle and as little as possible of the quilt is over here. Now I have a fairly large space here um, and that's why I bought this machine when I bought it. The throat space here is fairly large. <clears throat> the machine is very, very fast. I've got it on top speed here. Um, and yeah, I mean, this machine has worked very, very well for me for the past few years. So, all right, so let's get started. I'm usually start now. All right, so one thing I have to say I don't enter my quilts in shows ever. I have no need for my quilting or my quilts or any of like that, like that to be perfect. So I don't bury my threads. Um, I stitch a few stitches in, in one spot to kind of lock them in and then I just quilt. 
<clears throat> those little knots, you know, sometimes they show, especially if your uh, thread doesn't match exactly your fabric. So if that bothers you, then definitely bury your threads. I don't. All right, so I like to start off the quilt and into the batting. And the first thing I do is basically put my needle in and back up again, pull, and then get the bottom thread or the bobbin thread up on top. And that basically saves me from having to deal with like thread nests underneath. And that also allows me to keep the thread out of the way while I get started. So I've got both my threads here. I'm just gonna put my finger on them so they don't get in the way. I'm just gonna do a very simple meander design. Um, nothing fancy. This very, very easy. All I do is basically move my hands and move the quilt in a random kind of squiggly design. Okay, so a few stitches in place. Put my fingers on the thread. Try not to stitch over my basting threads. I'll just take those out as I go. And here we go. Okay, I'm going to stop now and just kind of move those threads out of the way and get rid of a few basting stitches. I don't, I don't um, suggest that you take out too much of your basting stitches or your pins at a time. Just take them out as you get to them. That way you're sure that your quilt sandwich is going to stay together the whole time you're quilting. Now I need to move the quilt a little bit. Like I said, I like to quilt this in sections and I usually base like where I go um, on the actual piecing of the quilt. Now there's not a whole lot of piecing on this quilt so it's a little more difficult. But if I just kind of swish around a bit and just, I can now quilt this whole piece Obviously, I'm going to end up, this is a 90 inches by 90 inches quilt. So eventually, I will end up with about 45 inches stuck in this little area here. But I'm going to try and delay that as much as possible. And probably at the end, I'm going to end up stuck with 45 inches of quilt over here. 
All right. <clears throat> so this piecing here, this whole section here is basically the middle of the quilt. So the, the way the quilt goes is there's piecing in the middle all the way down. And then there's piecing in the middle the other way all the way down with a lot of negative space on the sides. So I've done, I basically started in the middle and I've done a whole section here. And you can see here, I'm starting to get quilt on the right hand side. So I'm gonna basically continue this way now, all the way to the end of the quilt, quilting about this wide, all the way down. And then I'll turn the quilt a little bit and do another section about this wide, all the way up to the middle and so on. So um, I'll just keep quilting for a little bit off camera and then um, I'll come back and show you the progress I make. All right, so I, I went from the middle of the quilt over here. Now I'm at one of the borders again. You can see the batting here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm basically going to change sections. So I'm going to finish all of this section here and then move down so that I'll have all of this in the throat space here. Okay, so you can see here that I've got the, the section I've already quilted is over here. Now I'm gonna do the quilting on this section here. So, and you can see from my basting stitches about where I'm gonna go to. So I'm gonna take out these stitches here and then quilt this whole section and then pull the quilt to me and quilt the next section and so on until I'm back to the middle again. And then I'll move to the left and go down and go until I've got about half the quilt on this side and then just turn everything 45 degrees or 90 degrees to go and tackle the next section. And that's basically how I can manage a 90 by 90 bed size quilt under my domestic sewing machine. Now, uh, like you saw, I try to keep the designs I pick for such a big quilt very, very simple. It's either a meander, the way that I did on this one, or a basic, simple flower design, but I never... I never do custom quilting or very detailed quilting on such a big, big quilt. It's just too demanding for me. So I try to keep it simple and um, yeah, that way it's just possible for me. Um, another thing I try to do is take, take regular breaks. This can be hard on the shoulders and on the neck so I try to get up, walk around on a regular basis, take a sip of water, you know, the usual. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will happily answer any and all questions you might have. Please leave me a like on your way out if you like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for stopping by and I will see you soon.